going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Hills of Silent Podcast, where we chop, 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 get up about the games of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I'm Two Tone the Artist. And I'm Mitch the Peach. Got an exciting episode for you guys. Been playing some good games. Uh, apparently, Mitch has some pickups, which I'm always excited to see what he's been adding to his collection. So without further ado, let's do what it do. All right, yes, Mitch, sir. what's been going on, man? First of all, where did you get these games? Is this another GameStop purchase? Not this time around. I was actually uh, in uh, Decatur, Illinois for a wedding and decided it was my college's homecoming in Jacksonville, Illinois, where I went to college at is only about an uh, hour or so away. So decided to, you know, make make the drive down there and hang out with some college buddies for uh, the, the Friday before the wedding and uh, the Saturday before I headed back for the wedding. I was like, I'm going to go stop at the local game store. I uh, want to give a shout out to uh, the guys. They probably don't listen, but maybe one day they will to uh, press start games and videos. Uh, they actually upgraded their location from the last time I was there. They had a smaller spot. And now they expanded and uh, got a little bigger location and uh, just a great selection of games. Really nice guys. Um, you know, even gave me a GameStop like deal where I bought three games and I got one free. You know, the lowest one in the cart was free. So uh, don't always get that with the with the local spots. But uh, yeah, it was nice to be back in my college town. I hadn't been there in probably five years. So it was only right. I stopped at the game store and gave him some love. OK, so when you were going to college there. Were you going to that game store back then, or is this something you found out was in town later on down the line? I would go there on occasion then, uh, but they did put a GameStop in my sophomore year. They didn't have a GameStop there my freshman year, but then I it like popped up when I came to school sophomore year, and I was like, "Oh heck yeah, we got a we got a GameStop!" So uh, I I'd go there quite a bit too. So. Uh, and uh, the Press Start games was a little smaller back then, not as not as big of a selection, but they've they've grown and they got they got some cool stuff. Uh, I think you would really like it if we went down there. A lot of good retro stuff. I almost bought a Super Nintendo. They had one for like ninety bucks there, okay. and I was really tempted to grab it, but uh, I don't need another console at the moment. Uh, I could always go back on a later date. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the few consoles I don't have is a Super Nintendo. As I told you, I recently got a Sega Genesis, and uh, at some point I need to get the Super Nintendo too. But I didn't grow up with that console, so I don't really have a ton of nostalgia for it, but I know I have some good games on it. Yeah, if anything, I I really, my buddy Bill, who was with me listens to the pod, uh, he, he came in to check out some stuff, and they had some really really rare uh, Nintendo 64s, like, uh, like, you know, Pikachu Edition 1, and those were tempting but those were over like two hundred dollars and stuff and i'm like i can't i can't justify that one right now but n64 is more of my childhood and i would like to have one of those again yeah speaking of super nintendo and n64 there was one moment in time that i owned a super nintendo and i was at um oh my god i can't believe i'm drawing a blank game crazy that's the one that was attached to hollywood video Fortune. rental stores right back in the day okay yes I had walked up to the game crazy by my house and one of my buddies from high school was there trying to trade in his N64 and his Super Nintendo. And I think at that point, the company had just decided to stop carrying those older consoles. So I walked in on him and the guy was like, yeah, I'm not even interested in this stuff. He's like, dang, man. And then me being the opportunist, I was like, what 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 have you got there, man? What are you selling? He's like, man, I was trying to sell my N64 and the Super Nintendo and all the games, and he had a decent stack of games for both, and I think I offered him like twenty five bucks for it, and he sold it to me, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was excited. I got home, I took a trip down a nostalgia lane and and played a bunch of the N64 games played a bunch of the Super Nintendo games, and then eventually I got tired of it, and I think that I resold the consoles. I don't have a memory of reselling them, but eventually they disappeared, so I must have sold them at some point to who, to where, I don't know, I don't remember. But looking back on it, man, I wish I held on to that stuff, because he had some games that are pretty rare now, 
And uh, yeah, to be able to get all that for $25. And again, this is what I'm always talking about. It's like when a, when you're just a few generations out from a game console, there's that, that moment in time where nobody really wants it and people are just trying to give right. it away. And that's the perfect time to snatch stuff up. I didn't really collect games back then, but... Yeah, I didn't realize that that was that's what was going on because at the time it's just that stuff was worthless. Nobody wanted an N sixty four. Nobody wanted a Super Nintendo. But today, I, man, I would kill for the opportunity to buy an N sixty four and a Super Nintendo and games for both right. for like twenty five bucks. Like just walking in on a game store in on that deal. So dang, man. Anyway, yeah, that's that's, that's just reminding me of that right story. There. For a console, that's just a drop in the bucket. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, I went to my uh, went to my college town and uh, uh, got some pickups that I, I do want to go over, and I'm gonna start with uh, one that's got a lot of nostalgia for me and my late friend Brian. I had to pick it up. This is Sega Soccer Slam. This is uh, what the heck? Let me see that cover. What in the world? There's like some super muscular dude on the front and uh, well, kind of hard to like go back to the front of it what's on the other side it's uh is that like a bunny rabbit or like a bug i came in yeah they're like uh, buffed up soccer players that you you kind of assemble a team as and uh i never even heard of that game and i'm, I'm I know a lot yeah. of the ex the games on the original OG Xbox, and that one I've never even seen or heard of before. That's wild. Yeah, I used to go to my late friend Brian's place, and we would we would uh, play against each other in this one. And I believe it's backwards compatible on my Series X, so I can still play it. Even you know, I don't just have to put uh, it on the shelf; I can actually play it. Is it uh? So, what is it? Two player co op for, or I mean, two player multiplayer, four player multiplayer, four player multiplayer. Man. Oh, that's what I love about those old consoles. Because nowadays yeah. it's hard enough to find games that have any local multiplayer. And if they do, it's typically like one or two player multiplayer. But back in the day, man, N64, OG Xbox, GameCube, it was very common to see that four player multiplayer. I just love that, man. That was so great having all your buddies over and, and that many people being able to play these games at once. Yeah, that's kind of my like my hope. I can get some of the guys over and we can we can reminisce and play a little couch couch co op against each other, a little two on two action. Uh, would be would be pretty fun. Uh, yeah, big fan of soccer games, and this one just has a, a bunch of nostalgia for me just because of playing it as a kid in the neighborhood with uh, with my buds. Nice. Only it was only ten dollars, but this is the one I actually got for free. Uh, thank you to the the guys at Press Start. So uh, nice. Yeah, he's like if you if you get one more. You know, your lowest one will be free. I'm like, oh, okay. I'll go see what else is out there. And yeah. <laughs> went and picked up another one. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, moving on, I added to a lot of the games I've been picking up lately. I've been adding to my Wii and Wii U collection. Um, I'll save the best one that I'm excited about for last. But uh, this one, I, I picked up the the third Metroid oh, Prime. Nice. Metroid Prime Corruption. And uh, I have been playing a little bit of the of the remake of uh, Metroid Prime, the first one that is on the Switch right now. I own the second Metroid Prime on GameCube. I actually got that at Mega Replay with you, Mike, during the holidays one time. Um, I saw this for like fifteen bucks, and I was like, "Yeah, sure, I will. Uh, I will go for the uh, for some more Metroid Prime. I really wanted to have all three of them in the uh, collection, so." Uh, Excited about that one to give it a try. Okay, I just looked it up because I was curious if that ever released on another console, and it did not. So the Wii is the only place that you can play that game. And the best thing about my Wii U is you can play Wii games on your Wii U. Yeah, I mean, really, that's the yeah, that's that's the best way to go. When there's a console that's backwards compatible, that's the one to get. Like I have mm -hmm. tons of PlayStation One games, but I don't own a PlayStation One because I can play all those games on my PlayStation 2 or my PlayStation 3. But same situation, like, I don't have a Wii and I don't have a Wii U, but if I ever were to get either of those, I would just get the Wii U, because then I'd be covered on both libraries. There was actually an article, uh, I saw something or a post somewhere where I guess there was a retail Wii U purchased in the year of 2023, a couple weeks ago. What? Like, I 
there must have been some some store had it could have been like a mom and pop shop who knows what the heck it was but it had a a full in the box retail Wii U and somebody purchased it and I guess there was some record of the purchase and somebody wrote an article about it <laughs> slow <laughs> news <Which> day is, <laughs> yeah I guess so but I mean it's kind of interesting that a brand new Wii U is getting sold in 2023 yeah Man, I'm even to this day. I'm still kicking myself for not picking up that Wii U that I, I think I told I, you about. It was at a yeah. half price books for like eighty dollars. I think a it was great in like price. great condition. And yeah, I, I I walked away to think about it. When I came back, somebody else was buying it. So I was like, dang it. Should yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a hidden gem of a console. People just didn't understand. They people just thought that they. It, I think the naming it a Wii U really made it. I guess tough for them because it actually is like a next generation console, but people just thought it was a extended version of the Wii they already had. But people that weren't super knowledgeable of of video games, so it didn't sell as well. But I think it's a great console. Um, I know they poured a lot of stuff over to Switch, but um, I've really enjoyed mine. I still break it out and play it occasionally. Nice. And there is stuff they haven't ported over to Switch, which would, uh, which would be my last uh, Wii U one I got. But I'm going to move on. I have this one digitally, but I wanted it physically. And this is the new Super Mario Bros. U. And then it comes with also some extra content with uh, Luigi Brothers U. So it's basically like uh, a standard platformer Mario game. Um, but it is only on the Wii U. Look at that case, man. On the inside, it's got the giant recycle cut out yeah <laughs> yeah interesting choice with that but hey i guess you know. that that's interesting to me because with xbox 360 games i don't know if it was just certain games or if this is just what they did later on in the lifespan of the xbox 360 but it seems like the earlier xbox 360s were much thicker in full plastic and then the later ones were very thin plastic and they had sections cut out of them to save on even more plastic. That's like almost nothing. It was just enough plastic to hold the disc and close the case shut. So that Wii U kind of reminded me of that where they've got a bunch of the plastic cut out. Yeah, comparing my like Xbox One like boxes compared to my 360 ones, like they shrunk those things so much to save on plastic. Yeah. Which I guess is a good thing, you know, less yeah. less plastic in the world. But there is there is something nice about holding like those old PlayStation Two cases or original Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty cases, and they're just like very hefty. And then you open them yeah. up, and then they've got they used to have the manuals in them, which is like non-existent anymore. But just was a more substantial game, right? And my last of the Wii U, uh, this one I was looking, I didn't think I would find it in the wild, but I, I did. And this is Star Fox Zero. It is, this was not ported over to the Switch. It is a brand new Star Fox game that really came out at the end of the life, life of uh, the Wii U. So I don't know how much the sales were, but they actually bundled it with Star Fox Guard which I believe, I don't know what console it originated on, but, but it's like it, essentially they give you, if you open, it is essentially two games in one package. Interesting. So you get the Star Fox Zero, and then you also get the Star Fox Guard. Okay, nice. Um, I'll see your Guard. Looks like it was only ever released on Wii U. Okay, then maybe it was like more. Just was like. Huh, that is interesting that they released it in like a dual pack. And it was co developed by Platinum Games. Interesting. We were just talking about them last episode. And what was the other one? Star Fox 3? Star Fox Zero. Star Fox Zero, okay. Star Fox yes. Zero. I wonder if that was ever ported to any other consoles. I don't think it was. I think they just left it on the Wii U. Yeah, apparently both of those games only were ever released on the Wii U. Interesting. And that's a rail shooter? Man. Yeah, those Star Fox games are pretty fun. I bet that one's good. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to play it. Uh, I'm always craving good Star Fox content. I was actually playing Star Fox 64 on my Switch, because with your online membership, you get access to some N64 games, and was playing some Star Fox 64 recently. Yeah. How much did you pick up that Star Fox for? Uh, twenty dollars. 
20 bucks for the, both those games? Yes, for both of them. Hey, that's a good deal. And, and that was part of my, like, buy two, get one free kind of thing, or buy three, get one free, I guess it is. So. Yeah. How much was the Mario one? Uh, the Mario one was 15 Okay, man. I, for some reason, I've been hearing that Wii U games were getting more expensive, but that's actually all pretty reasonable. Yeah, I have. I was surprised with the Star Fox one because I had not seen many of those uh, at any sort of local game store. I didn't check eBay, but I just saw it was right there, and for twenty bucks, I was like, sure, I'll, I'll snag it. Um, what was the name was of the Mario myself. game again? Uh, that is Super Mario Bros. U. Mario Bros. U. Is that another one that's? I yeah, another one that's they... a Wii. No, that one. That one they re-released on Switch. Okay. So you can get that one on Switch. But, uh... Yeah, it was. I think that was really the one that was the throw-in of hey, you'll get one free. So I threw that one in as well because I was just, you know, I, I like I'd like to have it on physical because I'm trying to collect all the Wii U games. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, those Nintendo games. They go yeah. up in value. That nostalgia yep. hits. All of a sudden, everybody wants N64 games. Now everybody wants GameCube games. And just yeah, exactly. get, them while, get them cheap while you can. Sounds like now is the time to grab some Wii U games. Yeah, we got to take you to that game store, though, because they had some other cool stuff. Like, I think they had a Resident Evil 3, like, their OG at, uh, there that I was almost tempted to purchase. And had a ton of just, like, regular Nintendo games, Super Nintendo games. They had everything you could imagine under the sun there. Some pretty some pretty rare stuff as well that they had they had encased. So yeah, really good store. Nice man. Yeah, we'll have to check that out when I'm in town. Uh, a couple others I'll just quickly highlight since uh they, they weren't from the store, but I got them. Uh, we've talked about one, but I did end up getting yeah. The Walking Dead, just because this is one of my favorite franchises and uh I I love this whole thing. And actually I already put it in the drive because Claire is here right now and we're going to boot it up and i'm going to show her the first uh the first chapter because that is probably one of the best uh, one of the best games i've ever played to be honest with you like wholesale that first chapter is just excellent yeah and i remember the first time i played uh played the first season it's kind of trippy because it starts out and you're like driving down i think uh 85 the highway in Atlanta and then all the characters are talking about all the the cities are surrounding Atlanta and yeah, it's just trippy living in Atlanta and then playing some game about a, a zombie apocalypse in your city so yeah it's cool yeah so got that one because I was jealous of you having that and I really wanted that in physical yeah. and then spooky season so I went ahead also and got the next dark pictures game which is the Dark Pictures Anthology, The Devil in Me. Okay, cool. Yeah, and haven't you beaten all the other ones up to that I've one? I've beaten all the other ones up to this one. Nice. Yes, and this one is actually centered around um, the um, the Devil in the White City, who is the serial killer and who murdered a bunch of people in Chicago during the World Fair. Um, like, that's a real so thing? They, it's a real thing, okay. and they based this, this game around that sort of uh he had like a um almost like a saw like mansion where he like booby trapped his mansion and he like lured people in and you what know did some messed up stuff to him this dude had a mansion and he was going around killing people yes what yeah there's a whole there's a whole great book on it actually called the devil in the white city if anybody uh is interested in learning more it's uh I've, it's a great read i don't read a lot but i read that one great read that's wild that the guy ended up getting caught right Oh gosh. Uh yes, I yes he did. <laughs> okay. But he did murder quite a few people before that. <laughs> what the heck? Man, I did not know about you said the devil in the white city. Yes. Uh, I can't remember his like actual name though, but I feel like these are I feel like covering some good stuff since it's getting closer to Yeah Halloween. Fiction book for the gnome style set out during the world's Colombian exposition. It tells the world's fair. Yeah, H.H. H. H. Holmes is his Yeah, name. okay, yeah, I have heard of him. Considered the first serial killer in the United States, 1861 to 1896. Uh. Do they tell his 
Dang, he died at 34, executed by hanging. Yeah, so def- he was definitely caught. Yeah, okay. Um, he was uh, proved proven the killer of 14 people, but he confessed to 27 murders. So I guess it's kind of a mystery what the real number is, but... Dude... Yeah, really cool that I'm I'm excited to play uh, this uh, this yeah. spooky season. I love uh, love when stuff is kind of like based in uh, in real history, but slightly fictionalized. Usually makes for cool games. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, that is my pickups. Uh, I have a lot of good ones that I've I've still uh, there was that one I was hinting toward that I I did win the eBay listing but I'm going to leave as a teaser for the next time we have an episode because uh, yeah I'm excited that I, I picked it up uh, I know my buddy Swanee is listening and knows exactly what I'm talking about uh, and we we discussed it off pod but uh, the rest of the listeners you'll have to wait and find out yep all right so rolling from that you told me about a new indie game that's coming out for pc it's on steam right now with a downloadable demo and the release date currently just says to be announced so there's no telling when this game will come out which worries me a little bit because lots of these indie games even if they have playable demos when they don't have a solid release date sometimes they just never get completed yeah. So I played this. It's called The Last Exterminator. And this game is basically a throwback homage to Duke Nukem. The art style is very similar. Um, the gameplay is similar. Uh, the humor is similar. And there's even an Easter egg in the demo where if you jump behind this fence into this alleyway and use the payphone to make a phone call, somebody with a Duke Nukem voice answers the phone. So there's no denying that the developers of this loved Duke Nukem and wanted to uh, recreate its heyday in the video game, in video game history. I loved Duke Nukem. I grew up playing Duke Nukem 3D. Uh, My mom bought me a copy of that for PC. I think we got it at Best Buy. And uh, I was way too young to be playing Duke Nukem because it has profanity, violence. It's one of like the first games that I knew of that had nudity in it. And my little six-year-old self shouldn't have been seeing all that. But, um, you know, obviously didn't affect me. It turned out to be a well-adjusted adult. And I freaking loved it. I loved every second of it. I just just knowing I was playing a game I probably shouldn't be playing just made it that much more awesome and that much more exciting. And Duke Nukem was always always a very um, like immersive game, right. being like one of the first real three D first person shooters. It just you could interact with everything, and the, there was so much pop culture <laughs> humor, and uh, yeah, just great great creative weapons. So. And actually, lately, I've been replaying through Duke Nukem 3D on my PlayStation Vita because it got a really, really good port on the PlayStation Vita. So this this came around right at the perfect time. And I played through the playable demo. It's very short. I mean, I beat it in probably like 20, 25 minutes. But it was so much fun. And it almost is more of like the original version that was shown off of Duke Nukem Forever. So for those who don't know the story, Duke Nukem 3D came out, was a huge success, and then several expansion packs came out, and then several companies made, several companies other than the original developers made ports to other consoles and and licensed sequels and all that stuff. But the actual original development team were working on like the official, official sequel for years And it was going to be called Duke Nukem Forever. And then there's the running joke that it's called Duke Nukem Forever because it's been in development forever and it's never going to come out. Well, I think back in 2001, they showed off a trailer for the game. And at the time, allegedly, the game was almost completed. And the trailer was using, uh, I don't know, uh, either 
an earlier version of the Quake engine or the id Tech engine. I can't remember. But it definitely had that like 2001 look to the graphics. But it just looked like it was going to be amazing. And that trailer got everyone hyped up about it. But the development team ended up scrapping that game and starting all over from scratch because the lead on the project saw the newest, best game engine come out. Every time a new game engine would come out and there'd be new technology, he want no, the game. Um, so that was the problem. It's just, it was too much ambition, too much trying to be on the cutting edge and not about, all right, we need to hit this deadline and actually release this game. And as the story goes, Gearbox ended up picking the rights, picking up the rights to it after the company finally went bankrupt working on this game. And that's because Randy Pitchford from Gearbox Software worked on the original Duke Nukem games. And and uh, so it was near and dear to his heart. So he, he wanted to see this game through. He saw that it was about, oh, they're almost complete with it. So he got the rights to it, finished up the game, and released the Duke Nukem Forever we all know from today which i loved but it got mediocre reviews but anyway there was always that what if that 2001 version of duke nukem forever came out would have that would that have been an amazing game because it looked amazing and actually recently uh an early build of that game leaked on the internet so you can go back and play a lot of that original 2001 version of duke nukem forever and to me, this The Last Exterminator seems more like that style. The art style is the same as that 2001 version of Duke Nukem Forever, and it just seems like it has that flavor to it. So if they actually finish this out, this to me would be like that playing through that long lost Duke Nukem Forever. And I, mean, I will go back and play that leaked version at some point. But, uh, you know, it's still not a complete game. But this, this looks like it has a lot of love poured into it. Um, yeah, it just it just brought me right back to playing first person shooters in like the late nineties, early two thousands, and I loved it. So I'm really looking forward to this coming out. It's gonna it's uh develop be in development by Ironworks Games, and that's also they're also gonna self publish it. Let me look at their Steam page real quick just to see if they, they have any other familiar. games they've released. Yeah. They do not. This looks like the first game okay. that's being released by them. There's like, been a lot of good uh, uh, spiritual successors too uh, lately. I know you played the demo of that one. I can't. The name is escaping me, but that Resident Evil type of uh, game that came out. You played the demo for it, and we talked about it on the spot. Yeah. But I can't think of the name of it now. Echo, I think it was Echoes of the Living. I think was what it was called. That sounds. That sounds right. Yeah, that was awesome too. I, I dude. Yeah, the fact that these indie developers can just go back and make what I consider is like long lost sequels, so to speak, to old games we love. Like, yeah, what if one more Resident Evil game came out on PlayStation 1? What if that Duke Nukem game was actually released in 2001? I love these like what if scenarios and these developers are making it a reality. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and I think the trend needs to continue. There's so many great games and so many great franchises that I mean, even if we can't get an official sequel that's actually licensed to it, man, yeah, let us get these uh, these homages, these these spiritual sequels to it. So, having said that, Mitch, are there any games that you could think of from your childhood that like would be perfect for that what if scenario? What if they made one more sequel to it back in its heyday? Yeah, speaking of uh, nostalgia with playing sports games uh, with my Sega Soccer Slam pickup, another one that me and the boys would play in the basement a lot together were the and NBA Street and, and the NFL Street that came later. But NBA Street, we played a ton of that in, in the basement against one another. And if someone could find a way to not only get the license to Street, I know it is an EA... I believe EA is uh, is the developer under that. But um, if somebody could find a way to, to to bring that back spiritually and still get like an NBA license so that they could bring these players still into it, um, that would be pretty cool. Even if it didn't have those, uh, like the NBA characters in it, if it just had 
because even in the in the NBA Street games that came out, they had those made up players that they brought in. Like I don't know, I think Slim was one of them. There's some random names that they had in uh, Bonafide. That was one of them. Um, so even if they just put a, like a cast of random uh, random people together and just made a game that was just like an arcade basketball game like they made with nba street or even nfl street that would be awesome yeah dude i remember those street games very fondly uh my buddy brought over nba street and i played that for the first time and yeah it was just arcade basketball fun it, to me that was almost like the spiritual successor to to nba jam because it it was just like an extension of that. And then when NFL yeah. Street came out, I don't know, for some reason I gravitated to NFL Street even more than NBA Street. And I played through the first one, loved it. Played the soundtrack on these games were amazing too. This is back yes. when like EA and all these was making all these sports games and just having these amazing licensed soundtracks of all like just the hot songs at the time. Yep. And uh, NFL Street 2 was amazing. And I did not actually know that there was an NFL Street 3 until years later. I, I was at some game store, and then I saw a copy of it um, on PlayStation 2, and I picked it up, and I played it, and it, it was fun. But, it, yeah, it wasn't until, like, a decade later that I found out that they even made a third one. And same thing with NBA Street. They made... I played the first one, played the second one, but they made an NBA Street 3 that came and out... What are you gonna say? Uh, on 360, they made an NBA Street Home Court. Yeah, is what that one was called, and that was one of the only games to this day that I have a perfect achievement score. I have every achievement, and one of them was super hard. I had to win like 12 games in a row online, and I just somehow I did it, and I was just really good at that game. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, and then they also made uh, FIFA Street. They had a few of those yep. as well too, which I didn't even know that they made uh, a FIFA Street series either. So it, it was uh, great, man. At the time, EA Games had the EA... I want to say these were EA Big games. Yes, they were. I was really just going to bring that up. It was EA Big. Yeah, they had the EA Big brand, which was less realistic um, sports games and more arcade stuff. Because well, I think like SSX Tricky might have been under that one yeah. as well. Which again, was, uh, snowboarding which is technically a sports totally game. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Back to NFL Street, uh, I, I have really good memories of that one as well. My my brother was in high school at the time when he was living actually in the basement where I would just I would I was always obviously in the basement as you know. Uh, my dad's growing up and uh, he would come home late at night from some high school party and he would just come home and see me playing a game. He's like, "You want to play some NFL Street?" And we just sit there and play NFL Street until like 3 a.m. against each other. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, I played a ton of NFL Street at your house. I remember, for some reason, I remember playing it, like, hooked up to the TV upstairs. Probably. There'd be sometimes, like, obviously, when my dad would go for a band gig and nobody was home, we would just... It was a bigger TV and obviously a more spacious living living area in there, so we would always hook up to the bigger TV and play games. Yeah, man, I love those games. Uh, like I said, when I when I first started getting into collecting games... I came across that copy of NFL Street 3. And uh, I also came across a copy of N NBA Street 3. And uh, I've since gone back and picked up NFL Street 1 and 2. I think I got both of those off eBay for like five bucks a piece. Yeah, but I've got I was like, man, I got too much nostalgia for those games. I got to have them in the collection. Yep. But uh, another one. So, yeah, if they made a, a, a sequel to that or, or some indie developer like brought back that glory of just like those street sports games that'd be sweet but another yeah. game that came out around that same time that is long overdue for a sequel which also happens to be an ea game is def jam vendetta and def jam fight for new york which were two fighting games where the whole roster were rap stars and it's just the most crazy nowadays like that doesn't even make sense like what you're gonna make a fighting game and it's gonna all be rappers but back let me tell y'all back in the early 2000s video games just games would come out with these wild concepts and it would just seem to be the norm there'd be some crazy game coming out you know every month and it just it made sense back then but i remember yeah, a lot of them worked like they actually hit and they yeah. sold well 
<laughs> yeah, both of those Def Jam games are actually really good fighting games. Def Jam Vendetta, I, the first one that came out, that one played because it was made by the same company that made the uh, the classic wrestling games on Nintendo 64. Oh, mm. man, it's like Akai, I think it was called, it was the developer. Mm. But I can't remember. I think it was Akai, but... But anyway, so it used the same game engine. So it had that same fun gameplay as the classic Nintendo 64 wrestling games. So not only do you have all these amazing characters to play as, but you actually have a decent fighting system behind the game. And that one was so much fun. I remember cranking through that one with my friends, and I was I was excited for that one. I had never heard of that franchise at all until you came over and brought it over. And I just watched you play through that thing. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then the fact that they could license all those rap stars. And I think it was, it was Def Jam Vendetta, but I'm not so sure every last one of those artists was on, were, on, were on Def Jam. I think they had some additional ones that were actually not on the Def Jam label, which was even, which was even better because you had even more variety. Yeah, because the ones that stood out to me, they had like Slick Rick was one of them. They had, I think, like Method Man and Red Man were both on there. Yep. Uh, and DMX, rest in peace, he was the best character in the game. And uh, I remember going to Game Crazy, speaking of, and because they had tournaments every so often, and they were right. doing a Def Jam Vendetta tournament. And I had just, I had been playing that game for months with my friends, and I was just You're unstoppable. Ready. This so is I'm your like, moment. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna go up there and beat this. So I went up there, and I just slaughtered everybody. And um, they probably gave you a gift card or something, right? Yeah, I like it got usually got prized. I was, I was the very last battle. It was me versus another guy, and uh, I crushed him. And I started celebrating. And they said, no, 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 no. The final match is best two out of three. I was like, ah, oh, dang it. I'm like, just give me my prize, man. I, I beat everybody, even this last guy. And, um, and then we ended up playing two more matches. And I think the guy beat me those other mm. two matches. But I think I was already thrown off mentally. Yeah, because I was I was celebrating prematurely. I was like, yeah, I beat him. I beat him. And they totally caught me off guard. I was gonna have to play him two more times. And yeah, it just messed me up. He ended up beating me. Um, but there was a second place prize. So yeah, like you said, I got a gift card or something. Uh, but that was a lot of fun. Uh, good memories. And then after that, they came out with the sequel, Def Jam Fight for New York, which is uh really collectible game right now it's i was just about to say that is very valuable yeah it's crazy to think at all the games like that would be one that's really expensive but i mean it's an amazing game so for me it's, it, i'm not surprised but i didn't think yeah. a lot of other people were, were into that game as much as i was they totally changed up the fighting mechanics i think it might even have been a different developer who did the sequel and it was a bit of, more of an acquired taste as far as the fighting mechanics went but overall i do think it was the more it was the better game because it just, I don't know. It just, it was, it was like a time capsule. It was just oozing hip hop culture in 2004. I mean, cause yeah. you could customize, you create a custom character and then buy clothes for them, buy jewelry for them. All the clothes was like the stuff everybody was wearing in 2004. And then in the game, you're using your, you're like Nokia flip phone to communicate with everybody. Just so like 2004. And then the music obviously was all from 2004. And uh, that that one was amazing. Me and my buddies, again, played, played the hell out of that one. And then when I first started getting into game collecting around 2015, that was one of the first games I picked up. Smart man. <laughs> yeah, I was, at a, I was at a thrift shop and I got a handful of games and they were... No, 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 I take that back. I'm getting, getting my memories confused. That one I didn't get at Thrift Shop. I think I got that one off of Craigslist. And uh, at the time, I paid like 30 bucks for it. And uh, then after that, they, uh, they I, I guess why they stopped is they came out with Def Jam Icon, I think was the last one they created. And I think that one didn't do so hot. Yep, so yeah, they did make a third one. Um, 
uh, anyway, just to finish my thought, I did once I got that in 2015, yeah. I played through it again, and it was just as much fun, and it was even better because it was like I said, it was such a time. That's when I realized how much of a time capsule it was for 2004. It was just totally a nostalgia trip. But yeah, then in for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, they came out with Def Jam Icons, which uh, was just not a good game. They again, they completely changed up the fighting mechanics, and this time it was like you fight to the beat. But all oh, hip hop no. songs are like kind of slow beats, so just the fighting, like you're you're incentivized to fight on beat, and it just like slowed down the gameplay so much, and it was just it was a hot mess. Nobody asked for that. <laughs> yeah, but they did have some other cool artists that were not in the previous games. So, could you imagine if they do it again, but they open it up like way more, like aside from Def Jam, like put in like J Cole and drake and you know like that's what i want savage that's what i'm saying how crazy would it be if that game came out today like just that's uh, imagine that today just a fighting game coming out with like drake and like you said 21 savage or like post malone or um travis scott Big like it's just, or, it's just like what yeah. what that would just be the weirdest thing it would be, but I feel like rappers would get behind it and like love it. Like I feel like they would, I don't know. Like just, I feel like that would be so cool. And I, I mean, I know it'd be tough to do in this day and age with, with licensing and stuff. I think it's a little tougher than uh, than back then when they were. But you yeah. know, come on, let's not. God, I, I would pay full price for that. Let me uh, have it, <laughs> dude. Absolutely, is long overdue for another Def Jam game, Def Jam Vendetta Fight for New York game. But I would have; they would have to release that physically, because yes. with all those licensing issues, if they release that digitally only, phew, come on, man! They would two years from now the licenses would would expire, and they would strip all the songs out the soundtrack. Like that's something I would have to have physically, so that yeah. I knew that forever I would have every character, every song on the soundtrack. Like not have to worry about getting pulled due to licensing issues and your licensing expiring. Yep. Uh, but anyway, yeah. All right, uh, man, it's just been an, a nostalgia trip nostalgia episode. Cast. What uh, what <laughs> else is what else is making a comeback? <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Let's just let's just keep on it. We're we're good at we're good at accidentally theming these episodes. But uh, Halo Three Mountain Dew Citrus Cherry is coming back, and for me, as Halo Three being my prime years of gaming. Uh, this Halo 3 Mountain Dew is very nostalgic for me. Um, it came out in uh, 2007, I believe, whenever Halo 3 was released as more of like a promotional uh, partnership with Mountain Dew. And I believe when you would you could purchase those 12 packs, you got some in-game in-game bonuses for you know buying them whether that be xp i can't remember exactly how how it worked with halo but uh aside from you getting a nice tasty mountain dew to enjoy while you're staying up all night as a high schooler you also get some you know some in-game uh bonuses uh, in, in halo 3 and uh yeah halo 3 was the heyday of gaming with me so like the fact that they're bringing this back and uh and re-releasing it, it, it is kind of funny i mean like i'm not a big I still do drink Mountain Dew on the occasion, but I try to tend toward the diet Mountain Dew with all the with all the sugar. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to to drink many of these, but I might have one just to see if it tastes like 2007. You said you were not familiar with uh, this Mountain Dew. It must have. Uh, yeah, I it, mean, I know a lot of games have done promotions with Mountain Dew, a lot of video yeah. games, um, and I'm sure I passed this in the grocery store and just was like, oh, huh, they got Master Chief on the Mountain Dew can. But since I never was a huge Mountain Dew drinker, I don't think I ever bought it or ever tried it. Was it was it actually good? It, it was actually pretty decent Mountain Dew. I mean, you can ask one of my buddies who, uh, you know, he, he used his entire allowance to uh, and essentially filled his entire room with these 12 packs of Mountain Dew that he would, I don't know how long it took him to drink those, but uh, he had at least over 100 cans of that thing. I'm not sure if he was trying to, like, just get as bunch of, as much of the bonus content you could, kind of like with Call of Duty they did as well, where you could get like double XP or whatever. But uh, he liked it a lot because uh, he he drank all of those. But uh, 
yeah, maybe he should have held on to them though, because uh, they uh, they might have a little value now. Yeah, which is crazy to me because when sodas and even some food to an extent gets discontinued, just like with anything else, just like with video games, the nostalgia hits and then people all of a sudden they want it. And then where do you turn to when you're trying to find something that's no longer made? The collector's market, eBay, Amazon, online sellers. Yep. So I remember when sodas like Surge and stuff were discontinued, you know, uh, people were selling cans on it on eBay for three, four, five times the original listing price. So I'm assuming this is no different. No, it is. It is no different. Uh, there are there are some listings on there, and people uh, people have been trying to get them, even though there are a lot of disclaimers that you cannot drink this soda now. Like that, there you should not open that and drink it if you are buying a soda from two thousand seven. All right, so I, I pulled up some listings. What um, you got? Let's go to the actual sold items, because I do see there's first of all there's these. Mountain Dew Game Fuel Halo 3 aluminum bottles, which actually Ooh. look pretty cool. Didn't uh, know about the aluminum bottles. Yeah, I didn't know these were a thing. I mean, these are cool. I think if, if any of them are going to be collectible, I think these these like tall bottles would be more so than just like your regular 12-pack sure. can. Um, but anyway, yeah, they're asking $200 for a six-pack, and they are very much even in the title saying hey these expired in 2008 aka don't drink it yeah it's gotta be some liability thing there we're like yo <laughs> i put the disclaimer drink these at your own risk and we we got another seller here who's trying to sell one can for 650 dollars and another seller trying to sell one can for 1500 dollars and then I see the two liter cans going for like fifty to sixty dollars. Uh, this guy's trying to sell an unopened two liter original two thousand seven Halo Three Mountain Dew for three thousand four hundred and thirty one dollars. And there's twenty five people watching this eBay listing. That's insane. And uh, it's like if you, you were to collect this stuff, like like. Honestly, like, where would you put it in your household where you would think that it would be like a, I don't know, it would look good? It would look, I don't know, it just seems very odd. Yeah, where, yeah, first of all, this listing, this guy, where did he have this? Where do you, where did you find this? Who, did, was this like in the back of somebody's fridge for 15 years? Was this in the back of somebody's cabinet for 15 years? How do people still have these unopened? Like, typically when something expires, you immediately throw it away. But somehow, there were plenty of people, apparently, that held on to this stuff long past expiration. And this one, looks. this is the guy trying to sell one for $3,400. It looks like it's in rough shape. And it also looks like some of it is evaporated. Which, uh, I'm sorry, I need a discount if I'm missing, like, 12 ounces out of my 2 liter. Uh, but anyway, I just... But you know, people can ask for any amount of money on eBay. So let's let's take a sure. look at the sold listings. All right, so yeah. one aluminum can uh, did sell for ten dollars. There's a four pack that sold for forty, three pack that sold for forty. So people are buying these aluminum, or the tall boy aluminum cans. Okay. And then somebody bought a complete can set or Halo Three Limited Edition Mountain Dew Game Fuel can complete set of twelve empty cans. For fifty dollars, somebody bought twelve empty soda cans for fifty bucks, and uh, somebody else bought another one for about thirty dollars. Which this is interesting. It says empty but still sealed. How does that work? How did they empty this without opening it? Let's say it's like poked a hole in the side of it. Yeah, I feel like that like still like depletes the value if you poked a hole in the side of it. <laughs> yeah, there's a un, uh, unopened two liter that sold for forty two dollars. Another one that sold for oh, a really janky looking uh, twenty ounce that's all squished. 
Oh, it already. Oh yeah, it was not. Duh, I'm looking at the ending ended listings. Not let, let me look at the picture. Dang it! I just want to see the picture. There we go. Uh, yeah, this one's all bent up, and uh, this one sold for sixty three dollars. And there are some that sold for more. There is a unopened two liter that did sell for five hundred dollars. Which uh, I'm suspect. Why? That, that that sounds suspect, dude. I wonder if if this seller bought it with another account because it's just weird that all these ones are selling for fifty dollars and then somehow somebody magically was willing to pay five hundred dollars. Yeah, for that it. seems like somebody trying to drive up their own value on yeah, that one. Yeah, which happens. But there's another one that was listed for one hundred and twenty six dollars, but it says best offer accepted, but doesn't tell you what the best offer was. But yeah, that's it. That's all the recent listings. So, uh, huh. crazy world, man. People buying old expired food. Hey, I mean, I collect video games, but I can still go back and play those old video games. I can't go back and, and drink a 15 year old expired soda without probably puking my guts out. Yeah, yeah, that that would not be fun. But uh, I I do want to bring up uh, quickly. They they did bring back this uh citrus cherry mountain dew uh there was a reason behind it besides just uh just pure nostalgia for us halo 3 folks they halo uh infinite uh, is actually making a really nice turnaround right now i've been playing it a little more recently and have been really enjoying the content that they're finally putting in we talked about on the last a recent pod or i guess it was a distant pod at this point uh how slow they were with uh, rolling out their their new content and there just wasn't a lot there at first even the forge mode and co-op campaign were completely missing but now they've put a ton of content in and they're actually bringing eight halo 3 remastered maps back in halo infinite which i am super excited what? about that is freaking awesome uh, they are bringing back, uh, they're all reimaginations is what they call it. So they're going to be the map. Uh, some of these I actually have already played in, uh, I think one of them I've already played in Halo Infinite. They, but they, they kept it, I guess they're on the, uh, the list. Um, so they're bringing back Guardian, which is a classic Halo 3 map. Uh, Construct, like a lot of these are very much like the, the major league gaming maps at the time. Um, Blackout, which is essentially Lockout from Halo 2, as we all know, the classic map. Uh, the Pit, which is probably my favorite Halo 3 map, uh, which is one they already have in Halo Infinite, and it's fantastic. Uh, High Ground is a, another great one. Isolation and then Narrows, which is a, uh, all of these. Are, they couldn't have picked any better choices, honestly. These are eight great ones you can put so many cool game modes on and really driving that nostalgia uh even further with their reimagination of these levels dude that is freaking awesome i love halo 3 got so many good memories and i still have yet to jump into halo infinite so i guess now's the time and now is the time uh, i booted up today they don't have them yet uh, i did leave out one though um, I believe it used to be called Foundry, but it was a forge map that they they would, I guess, move around into different uh, different variations to create different sort of maps in one little atmosphere. But they're doing it again with and bringing it back, but they're calling it Critical Dew Point, which is, I guess, their partnership with Mountain Dew. They're just going to call it something with a Mountain oh, Dew name. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, it's, they weren't there yet. There, I guess there's going to be a whole playlist that you can play all of these in, which will be awesome just to boot up the playlist and not have to like randomly get it in a in a random playlist. So I, I'm super excited when these come out. Um, yeah, Halo Infinite really turning around. I, if people have not dove in and really want some good some good Halo play, um, it, it along with the Master Chief Collection, which is always there for you with the old stuff. This is actually a really solid Halo game that they're putting together finally. Nice, man. All yeah, right. It's, it's nostalgic in my heart, man. I love me some Halo. It's my it's my favorite video game franchise. I, I like when they just, you know, they, they keep adding content and keep trying to make it a, the best game possible. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this was a good episode, man. Covered a lot of stuff yeah. that, that I'm real passionate about and, uh, same. Got me wanting to go back, play some old NBA Street, NFL Street, and Def Jam. 
uh, and I'm definitely psyched about this Halo stuff. Not so much the Mountain Dew soda. Um, get one, man. Drink it. Let me know. I'm gonna get one. Let me know oh, if it yeah. tastes I'm the same get as one it used to. <laughs> if you can remember what it used to taste like, I will report back. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think I think we can end it there. Thanks everybody for tuning yeah. in. Uh, you can find all our episodes on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Where else we at, Mitch? Yep, our Twitter is at the at Hills Are Silent. Our Instagram is Instagram backslash Hills Are Silent. Our TikTok is at the Hills Are Silent podcast. Our YouTube again is at the Hills Are Silent. If you have any questions, comments, again, we did not go over the comments. I completely forgot. I'm sorry, everyone, but we will get to them when we come back. We are going to be taking a two week break. Actually, we are. Uh, Mike is uh, getting married, which is uh, yes, pretty exciting. And uh, I am going on vacation next week and then obviously going to Atlanta to attend Mike's wedding. So we are going to take a much needed break, but uh, we cannot wait to come back and share even more fantastic content. But uh, we will catch you on the next episode. See everyone.